I don't know whether you guys know about this really nice method of getting 3D information from Google Maps and then being able to use it in either Blender or exporting from Blender into Element 3D in After Effects. Uh, allows you to sort of have instant cities that also have materials on them, which can save a huge amount of time. Now, I'm not saying these are photorealistic, but they're pretty good, um, at least if you want to show graphically a city. Um, and they're also really good for silhouette stuff. So if you want to use them sort of uh, outline artwork um, for different uh, projects, they're really good. Um, now, there's this guy um, here who has developed this amazing import system um, on Google Maps. And it sounds complicated when you first read, but actually it's only really three distinct processes. So it's pretty quick. Um, he's obviously put a huge amount of work into this. So if you do use this and you make money from it, please donate to him. Um, it's only fair. And that way other things will get added onto this. So let's just talk about how you do it. So first things you want to do is you want to go to this website address, which I'll put in the description. But we're going to click here on releases and get the latest version. So you click here and you'll see a few things. And the first thing you want to do is download this and save it somewhere you can find it. Um, I have a network drive that I tend to send, save all my installs to. Um, you don't want to open this zip. You just want to download it in its entirety. So that's step number one. Step number two is you want to download Blender if you haven't already done so. So for those of you who don't know about Blender, Blender is an amazing, fantastic open source 3D program, which is well up to the standard of commercial ones that might cost you several thousands of pounds a year in a subscription. I personally do donate to them because I think it's an amazingly worthwhile product. Um, and again, nothing really is for free. This is thousands of people's time. Um, and it saves you money. So it's all a good thing. So if you go to blender.org and then download the latest Blender. Um, and the encouraging thing here is if you're going to be using this as an export method into uh, After Effects and Element, the plugin Element 3D, you don't really need to know Blender very much. So that's kind of good. So again, download Blender, install it, and that's that. So let's say you've now... In downloaded the uh, maps model importer so in that case you need to open blender and it'll look like this and you want to go edit preferences and make sure you're on the add-ons tab and then you want to install the um, maps importer now like i said i have mine on a network drive um, i don't know where you put yours um, and so i have a blender folder here and you'll find the, let's just move this so you can see it. And then you'll find the Maps Model Importer. Once you've imported it, it will appear in this list. If I find mine. And so here you are, it's import. it's in the list. Make sure this tick box is checked. And I would also suggest saving your preferences. And that's that as far as Blender's concerned. So that's pretty cool. So let's talk about how on earth we get Google Maps into Blender and then into Element. So there's another little stage which the sharper eyed of you might have noticed. And that is it had this long string here. And what this is, this is a startup string that you need to put on an extent on the shortcut to Google Chrome. So first of all, you need to find where Chrome is. Here's my Chrome. Once you found Chrome.exe, um, you can see here it's in Program Files, x86, Google Chrome application. Right click on Chrome, and then I would then send to a desktop shortcut. So it'll create a shortcut. And let's have a look at that shortcut now. So here's my shortcut. If you right click on it and select Properties, you will see, let's close that a second, that there's the target here. Now the target is the box that you need to get all this. And it's quite simple because there's a little paste thing there. It says copied. You need to delete whatever's in there and then paste the new startup thing and then press apply. 
Now, what that will mean is Google will start up in a debug mode and it'll be sending out all sorts of information which you then need to intercept. So how do you intercept it? Well, again, that's pretty simple. You need to install RenderDoc, but here's the caveat. RenderDoc, again, is free, um, stable, works really well. Don't download the latest version. If you do, it won't have the option that you need to be able to import this information. Um, now, I found that RenderDoc version 1.9 and the 64-bit installer works perfectly. So that's the one I go with. So let's have a look how this works in practice. So what we're going to do is we need to start RenderDoc. So I'm going to go to my program files. Um, again, wherever you've installed it. So here's RenderDoc. Then what we want to do is we want to start the new version of Google Chrome through your shortcut that you have with the script on the target. So, and you'll notice as soon as you start it up, it says GPU starting with PID 11320 or whatever your number is, it'll be different to this. So then you go to render doc and you go file, inject into process, and you need to find this number. So scroll down, go jump the gun a bit there. Right, there it is. And it even says Google Chrome GPU. So you go inject. And now what's happening is this is now monitoring your Google Chrome. So we say OK on that one. And you can see along the top, you've got all sorts of debug stuff happening at the moment. And I could just do the usual one, which is New York. But I think uh, La Sagrada, that incredible cathedral in Spain, is just the best. So we're going to have a look at that. That's in Barcelona. So we're going to zoom in. And there it is in all its glory. So again, how do we get that into Blender and then into After Effects? Well, that's your view. So now what you want to do is tab over to Render Dock and say Capture Frames Immediately. OK, and if you notice, we're on this 3D overhead view here. So Capture Frames Immediately, click that. And then click on this and just give it a wiggle to make sure the focus is there. And when you go back to Render Dock, you will see that you've got a thumbnail here. And if you double click on that thumbnail, you'll see it's come up with a load of information now. And the trick now is to go File, Save Capture As. And you want to make sure it's an RDC file. And then you save that as I've done this previously, whatever it is, it is. So La Sagrada. And that's Render Doc done, and that's Google Docs done. So now we can start up Blender. We're going to press A to select everything. And we're going to delete everything by pressing the delete key. Because what we want to do is now import La Sagrada. So you can import, and you'll see that Google Maps Capture.rdc is now an option on your import. And that's the thing you installed previously. So now if we want to import La Sagrada, File, Import, Google Maps Capture. And then we go to where I saved my capture, which I saved it on my E drive, La Sagrada. And then we let Blender do its thing. So here we are. Now, if you want to move this around, um, best thing is hold down the shift key and click your mouse wheel to move it up. So you can have a look. You can use your mouse wheel to scroll in. Now, it's completely untextured, but that's just the viewport mode. So if you look up here, you can put the viewport shading on. And then once you click that, it'll load all the textures on. And you can see there indeed is La Sagrada in all its glory. And if you're into Blender, obviously, you can add on um, lights like a sun um, and then check in the actual shaded view here and, and move it around and do all sorts of interesting things. But we're not worried about that. What we're going to do is we're going to export this into Element 3D. And thankfully, that's a really simple process with this. So you go to your file, export, and Element 3D deals with OBJ files. So select that. And there's a couple of things you need to be aware of with Element is the geometry needs to be triangulated. It doesn't like it otherwise. 
Um, and you also need to make sure that you're going to write the normals and UVs and materials because that way it'll bundle them all up together. Um, and then it's just a question of putting them in a place where everything, well, basically where you can find it. So I put it in my buildings and I've got a folder called La Sagrada and I just basically click export into that. So that's that. And you can now forget about all those other bits and go into After Effects. Okay. Now with Element, as you know, you need to create a solid. So if you haven't already, create a composition, new composition, call it what you want, create a solid. And for clarity's sake, I always name this E3D. And I have a standard color for it, which is green. So I always make it green. That way I can locate it in all the um, layers. Then what you want to do is find Element 3D and drag it onto the layer. And of course, then it goes black and you get this uh, control panel here. Now, I don't import stuff through here because it doesn't tend to link the materials. What I do is I go through the main import. So I'm going to click on that. As you can see, it's already gone to my path anyway, but if it wasn't, you'd navigate to where you've saved lasagrada.obj, select it and open and accept all the de defaults. They're fine. And then we'll wait for it to load. As you can see, all the different materials have popped up down here. It's a little bit small, so we're going to go normalize size and we'll probably make it a little bit bigger anyway. But as you can see already, that's come in perfectly into After Effects and we go OK. And there it is. Now we can have a bit more fun with this. So we're going to go new uh, camera. And if you hold down, if you just press your C key once, it'll cycle through the different modes. So we'll go to where we can pan. <coughs> and you can see there, or we can zoom. Or we can move it up. That's just cycling through with the, with the C key. And all the options are available on the render settings, for example, um, ambient occlusion. So you can generate sort of smallish shadows. What I tend to do is put it up a little bit like four and then increase, decrease the radius to quite small. And then it sort of adds a bit more depth. To the different uh, buildings and whatnot. Um, of course, you can add lights. So let's add a parallel light. And we colored it slightly, slightly sunny. Um, so we go OK. And now you can see the difference the light makes. 